After spending several decades studying the archaeology of ancient monuments and constructions throughout the world, and traveling to Egypt for the purposes of first-hand investigation into the remains of such structures and megalithic constructions situated there, once with John Anthony West in 2007, and again in 2018, certain clear-cut differences in the design and construction of these ancient ruins began to become clear to me. I shall categorize these differences here as Type 1 and Type 2 architectural styles. Type 1 structures, such as the temples, residences, workshops, and in some cases, tombs, all share a conformity of design no matter when they were erected or which dynastic attribution they have had assigned to them. And that is, I all exhibit concessions to human scale and human convenience in such matters as doors, windows, skylights, stairways, ramps, passages, and floor plans. They also share a well-established and repetitive theme of ritualistic expression, such as hieroglyphs, paintings, mosaics, bas-reliefs, and symbolic decorative elements, such as columns, obelisks, statuary, and iconography of both religious and cultural meaning. The proportions and divisions of interior plans also follow formulas and traditions established at the beginning of the dynastic rule period and carried through consistently for literally thousands of years before the current era. Certain types of structures, such as the earlier mastabas and the later, more elaborate style of underground excavations undertaken in the Valley of Kings, for instance, were the locations of choice for the burial or entombment of nobles on up to pharaohs. And these were also laid out and built according to well-established protocols of design that were also formulated early on in the beginning phases of dynastic rule and continued unchanged until the fall of ancient Egyptian civilization circa 340 to 320 BCE. Then we have the type two structures, which also exhibit a consistent continuity of design, proportion, and plan, but all bearing absolutely no commonality with the type one architecture and construction styles. Type two structures contain no decorative features, no hieroglyphs, no reliefs, no paintings, no iconography. They are also built out of the largest and heaviest monolithic blocks found in any ancient Egyptian construction, exhibiting a style of stoneworking that also features interlocking polygonal joinery, which is usually mortarless, and where the gaps between the stones are so fine that a razor blade cannot be inserted between them. These type two structures are also often built on sites that offer no room for the maneuvering and placement of such massive monoliths, even if they had been put together with modern era equipment and lifting technology. A striking example of this is the so-called Valley Temple, located just in front of and slightly to the south side of the Sphinx. The core structure of this temple is formed of blocks quarried from the trench surrounding the Sphinx, which are approximately the size of modern locomotives and weigh up to 100 tons each. Contemporary crane operators and heavy lift specialists have studied the site and gone on record to state that modern equipment and techniques would be inadequate to duplicate this staggering feat of engineering. Another notable example of a Type II structure is the Osirion at Abydos, built of simple, geometric-shaped, unadorned granite blocks, averaging, once again, up to 100 tons each. For those unfamiliar with large weights and measures, 100 tons is approximately equal to 40 modern SUVs stacked up together or a modern diesel locomotive. Such objects cannot be moved in place with the simple rollers, inclined planes, and slaves pulling on ropes that the academics want us to believe. It simply cannot be done. The most famous examples of type two structures are the pyramids scattered up and down the Nile Valley, 
nearly 80 in number. Many are in ruins, placing them in question regarding their proper attribution as type II structures. But the most certain candidates are the three main pyramids on the Giza Plateau, the Red and Bent Pyramids at Dashur, the Pyramid of Zoser at Saqqara, and the ruined remains of the pyramid-type structures at Abu Rawash and Abu Sir. Another type II architectural characteristic which is seen in these pyramids is a complete lack of concession to human scale and human convenience of movement. There are no stairs, no doors, no skylights, no apertures to the surrounding passages, tunnels, and ramps, which exhibit strange proportions and angles of inclination that make for very difficult navigation of these features, usually requiring the use of ropes, ladders, and other contrivances to allow access to the various chambers and edits contained within them. There are no stairs, no steps, and the interior plans are obviously not designed to accommodate regular human passage or use. The descending and ascending passages in most of the pyramids, in fact, are proportioned in such a manner that forces one to creep along in a crouched posture and without the wood and metal ramps, stairs and railings installed by modern enterprise would be nearly impossible to navigate safely. Once again, I should emphasize that these structures are completely devoid of hieroglyphs, paintings, or other markings that were not added to them in the modern era by explorers, foragers, and graffiti mongers. If we accept the premise of type II structures in Egypt being indicative of non-traditional and pre-dynastic constructions, then our first question subsequent to this realization must be, when exactly were these monuments created and who were their planners and architects? These are questions we will attempt to address in Ancient Technology Architecture Part 2.